Hello everyone, uh, I am Muhammad Mustafa, the Regional Engagement Specialist for the Middle East and Asia at Data Site, and welcome to this Data Site webinar about improving equity and inclusion with the Data Site Global Access Fund. In this webinar, we are going to talk about the second round of the Data Site Global Access Fund. And in today's webinar, we have Muhammad Baisa, Data Site Board Member and also Preservation Manager at the King Abdullah University for Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia. We also have uh, my colleague, Gabriella Mihas, who is Data Site Community and Program Manager. Before we start the webinar, and in order to maximize the benefits of this uh, webinar, please uh, join me to consider the following points. If you have any questions, and we expect that we are going to have a lot of questions, please use the Q&O uh, box, not the chat box. So if you have any questions, please share them in the Q&A box. Also, you can follow the discussion through social media on the hashtag datasitegaf, and please adhere to the datasite code of conduct. Rest assured that this webinar will be recorded and shared also with you, including the slides. So no need to worry about the recording or the slides. Yeah, and without any further uh, delays, I would like to hand now to my colleague, Gabby. Thank you, Mohammed, and um, hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you can see my slides. And um, I'm uh, Gabi Mejias. I work as a community and program manager uh, here at Datasite. And today I'm going to give you a short introduction to our Datasite Global Access Fund. Um, so I'm going to speak about uh, data sites, um, the global access program, and then we'll uh, dive into the global access fund um, with information about the timeline, the scope, uh, eligibility, um, uh, focus areas and funding amount available, and very important, how to apply and what kind of support we can provide. So to begin with, um, Datasite is a nonprofit organization. Um, we are a global community that shares uh, the same interest, and that is to make research outputs and resources openly available and also connected so that they can be reused to advance uh, knowledge and research. As a community, we do this by um, using uh, open infrastructure, um, such as uh, metadata that connect research outputs and resources. And uh, we cover uh, identification and connection for a wide range of research outputs and resources from data, set, data sets to samples, images, preprints, and many more. And um, we also offer infrastructure that enables the creation and the management of persistent identifiers, such as um, DOIs, that can be integrated um, into your systems and services to improve research workflows. And um, this can increase both the visibility, the discoverability, and the reuse of your research production. Datasite provides the infrastructure uh, to make research openly available but it's actually our community of members that use that infrastructure to um, register DOIs and metadata for their uh, scientific productions. So currently we have uh, more than 1,400 organizations across uh, 55 countries that have connected their repositories or their systems to the data site registry. And overall, to date, our members have registered more than 60 million DOIs. As an organization and also as a community, we're strongly committed to uh, the value of openness. We are um, governed um, by the research community through an executive board that um, is formed by representatives of our member organizations. Um, Mohamed Baeza, who will speak next, is part of the data site executive board. We're also driven by the community through many different steering and working groups that um, advise our development and give us feedback on our plans. And 
we are sustained by the community, financially sustained by the research community. Um, organizations join um, data site as members, uh, support us with membership fees, and in exchange, they get the ability to register DOIs and metadata for the research outputs. Um, all the metadata our members registered is by default openly available um, through a CC0 license. And we believe that um, through open metadata, we can help increase recognition for a wide range of research outputs and resources. And we hope that this will also help build more transparency and more trust in research. And um, we collaborate um, with uh, many stakeholders across the research ecosystem. And uh, to reflect our commitment to openness, um, we have uh, signed um, the principles of open scholarly infrastructure, POSI, um, by uh, the acronym in English. And now I'm going to speak about the Global Access Fund. Um, to start with, um, the Global Access Fund is part of a Global Access Program. This is an initiative um, data site launched last year with the support from the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative to um, increase equity in the global research ecosystem. The idea of this program is um, to increase community awareness, um, technical uh, support to develop infrastructure and also to address financial barriers um, so that um, the global community can access and benefit from persistent identifier infrastructure. Um, and the idea is to um, expand um, the access and the visibility of research outputs and resources. And um, we hope that uh, with this program, um, we'll be able to enable more uh, co collaboration and innovation on a global scale. Um, this program is a team effort. Um, we have dedicated uh, regional engagement specialists um, for um, different uh, regions. Um, so uh, Mohamed uh, Mustafa is our regional engagement specialist uh, for Middle East and Asia. Um, based in Dubai. Uh, Bosuna Vileye is our regional engagement specialist for Africa, uh, based in uh, Nigeria. And Arturo Garduño Magaña is our regional engagement specialist for Latin America, based in Mexico. And as part of the Global Access Program, last year we launched for the first time the Global Access Fund. The idea behind this uh, fund is to help address uh, financial and technical and communication barriers that may prevent organizations um, in these uh, regions from benefit from our infrastructure and from our services. Um, and as I said before, um, last year we launched the first round of this funding. Um, we also launched the round in September. We received more than 180 applications from Africa, Asia, Middle East, and Latin America. And from those uh, more than uh, 180 applications, we selected 12 um, awarded projects. And you can see um, that we have yeah, projects uh, and organizations um, from all these regions. Um, and um, you can see uh, these, these projects are um, developing. Um, these organizations are developing their projects throughout this year uh, with our support. Um, we've been promoting these efforts through webinars um, and Logs and by the end of the year, they will conclude um, their projects. And now I'm going to share how to um, apply uh, for the fund and what, can, what kind of support you can receive. The timeline is very important. We launched the call for uh, proposals um, on September 2nd, and um, the last day to submit applications is October 11th. Um, after this date, 
will send um, the applications uh, for external review. And uh, we hope that by December, uh, we will be able to send uh, award notifications. And the awarded projects will carry out uh, the projects uh, from uh, January 1st to December 31st, uh, 2025, so throughout um, next year. Um, to apply, it's um, required that uh, you uh, represent a nonprofit organization within the research ecosystem. This can be a, a university, a research institute, an association, an NREM, or a service provider, and more, but it needs to have a nonprofit status and it needs to be based within Africa, Latin America, Middle East, and Asia. And if you're going to apply on behalf of your organization, you should have the authority to apply on, on behalf of your organization. Um, this um, fund uh, is open to both organizations that are currently data site members and also organizations that are not yet uh, data site members. Um, and a preference might be given to applications from countries classified as lower or middle income. We have two um, categories available for this funding. The first one is uh, outreach activities, and um, you can apply for funding up to 10,000 euros and infrastructure development, and you can apply for funding up to 20,000 euros. And on the first category, um, outreach, um, the idea is that you develop outreach and engagement activities that can help increase the awareness and the adoption um, of um, uh, persistent um, identifiers um, uh, in the fr framework of open science. Um, so this year, um, the, the selected projects um, that are working on this category this year are doing um, projects uh, that include uh, capacity building on um, persistent identifiers, research data management, fair principles. We also have a project that's develop, uh, developing a handbook uh, of persistent identifiers and open science. Um, also a couple of projects doing um, train the trainer workshops and activities. And um, these are only some of of the examples um, and yes, uh, obviously um, you can um, uh, suggest uh, other kind of um, uh, innovative uh, outreach and engagement ideas. The second category infrastructure development uh, involves um, developing open infrastructure and uh, also uh, integrations to uh, increase the adoption of data site infrastructure. Um, this could be developing a repository or a publishing system or any kind of system that will allow organizations to adopt, to integrate data site APIs and metadata. Um, if you already have a, one of these systems, um, you could also use this fund to develop your own data site API integration uh, that will help um, your organization uh, register DOIs and metadata in an automated way. And um, you can also develop new tools, new systems or service to um, obtain additional value from our infrastructure. For example, uh, visualization tools, statistics tools, metadata enrichment tools, quiz systems, and um, others. This year we have uh, projects developing data repositories, national uh, repositories, um, repositories uh, for museum collections. These are just some examples. And to apply, we recommend that you start by checking our guidelines uh, on our website uh, that we're going to uh, copy on the chat. We also have a page with uh, frequently asked questions that we recommend you to, to check. And um, to apply, you need to complete an application form that's in our website. And we will also uh, paste the application form on the chat. 
um, and you need to complete the form uh, with all the required fields, uh, including attaching uh, some uh, files like um, the project timeline, um, the budget, um, and also a sustainability um, uh, file. Uh, very important uh, to mention that uh, we will only accept applications that come through the form. So please do not send us applications per email because we will not consider those. And if your project is selected, you'll have to carry out uh, your project throughout next year. And um, there are some uh, expectation and requirements for selected projects. Um, one of them is that all the project outputs uh, need to be made openly available uh, under a relevant license. So um, if you apply to develop um, a repository, it needs to be made openly available uh, with a license, or if you plan to um, do some uh, communication materials, this also need to be released um, through an open license. Also, we expect that uh, the awardees uh, will maintain regular communication um, with us and also with other awardees throughout the duration of the project uh, to discuss project uh, progress and collaboration. So this year, we have been made um, doing quarterly calls with all our awardees to check the progress, to um, discuss any questions and also support the awarded projects. The awardees should also um, commit to writing a blog post uh, for our blog, a final report, and also participating in webinars to show uh, the, the projects and the impact of the projects. Very important um, that awardees will need to report how they use um, the funding. So we ask you to keep all invoices and receipts um, for um, yeah, uh, data sites. And we also have um, a website uh, with data sites ethics standards. Uh, so if you are selected, um, if your project is selected, uh, we ask you to uh, commit and adhere to these standards. And as I said before, we do have support um, available. Um, we have three dedicated regional engagement specialists, um, Arturo Garduño Magaña for Latin America, uh, Bosuno Vileye from Africa, and Mohamed Mostafa from Middle East and Asia. So if you're planning to apply and if you have questions, um, we ask you to uh, please start preparing your application as soon as possible. Do not wait until the last day. And um, if you have any questions, please contact um, Bosun or Mohamed and uh, we'll share their email addresses on the chat. And to conclude this first part, um, just to uh, remark that the goal, of, the goal of the Global Access Program is to um, create a more equitable and inclusive uh, research ecosystem where all uh, research communities uh, can have the tools and the resources um, to uh, share our, and make their work more visible. And if you're considering applying for this fund, um, we also recommend that you register for this uh, webinar uh, in, the, in the framework of our data site annual community meeting. Um, so this is happening on uh, the 25th of September and we are going to present um, three of uh, this year's awarded uh, projects um, from um, India, Nigeria, and Tunisia. So um, this is a good opportunity for you to uh, learn uh, from the experiences of the current um, awarded projects and also to ask questions um, about the project and um, how, how they've been developing the projects. And with this, I'm going to hand over uh, to Mohamed um, that will uh, share with us more information. Hello, everyone. 
Uh, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, thank you, Gabby and uh, Mohammed. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be with you again this year to talk a little bit about the Global Access Fund, the evaluation and the selection uh, process. Um, it's been a pleasure to see more than 180 publications last year from a different continent, and it was really a fascinating type of projects and ideas and proposals. We'll hope to get more this time and we're looking forward to look at and receive those applications and review them. So today in this session, we'll just talk a little bit about the Global Access Fund Committee uh, members, the review and selection process, and the evaluation criteria. That's Gabi and Mohammed says there will be a Q&A at, at the end. If you have any question left, please feel free to ask in there or in the Q&A um, uh, buttons. So the Global Access uh, Funding Committee consists of uh, uh, data side member, uh, board members and data side uh, staff members. So um, I'm Mohammed from King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. And we have also Helena from Data Site Netherlands and Rita from Data Site Germany, Salvatore from CERN Switzerland, and Jamie from uh, University of uh, Colorado, USA. For the GIF selection process, uh, it's very uh, straightforward, I think, process. It started once your, the deadline reached on October 11th. Um, the committee will start reviewing the proposals and uh, selected proposal that meets certain criteria will be then sent to the external uh, reviewers. Uh, the reviewers are from different regions and they will review the pro proposals based on uh, predefined evaluation. Uh, we'll talk about them later in this uh, presentation. Um, once the review external reviewers complete their reviews, they will uh, send it back to the committee, the JF committee, and the committee will review it again. And based on the feedback from the external reviewers, the, the committee will select the proposal that will be sent forward to the data side board, mem board members for voting and for granting the fund. Once that is done, then the successful application uh, uh, will be notified and the applicant um, that was not successful will be notified as well and they will receive a feedback from the committee. So hopefully that will be helpful for them uh, for the next round or um, any other uh, opportunity as well. So for the uh, GF committee, when the uh, deadline reach, we'll start uh, looking and reviewing the uh, proposals uh, based on three criteria. Uh, so is all the required information available for the proposals? To be reviewed, simple and uh, straightforward. Does the proposal meet the eligibility criteria? So it's important to really read the criteria and understand how that will be um, uh, matching your proposals. And the third point will be is the proposal in the scope of Global Access Fund. So it's also important to understand what is the Global Access Fund scope of uh, uh, support and fund. The selected uh, uh, proposals that passes the GF committee stage will be then sent to an external reviewers. Two external reviewers from uh, different regions will be reviewing each proposals um, and they will be reviewing it based on three criteria: The relevance, how the proposal is relevant uh, uh, and aligned with at least one of the three uh, GF call for proposals. And the second is the feasibility. Uh, the proposal should be present a visible project uh, within the funding time. So something that can be achieved from January 2025 until December 2025. Um, the impact, the proposal should make it clear that it will be having an impact to the communi community or regions uh, that it serves. So to elaborate a little bit more on that, uh, the relevance, the proposal formulate clear objectives that are aligned with funding priorities for this call. The proposed work is open. Uh, mm -hmm. The project con uh, concerns work with uh, not for profit, uh, non commercial platforms and services, uh, employees, uh, open standards, and encourage use and reuse of content. 
uh, the proposal benefits a currently underrepresented uh, community within a relevant region. That's the relevance uh, criteria. For the feasibility, we look at, uh, or the external reviewers will be look at uh, goals and outcomes of the projects are reasonably achieved and in concern with the suggested timeline and budget. So the more clarity you have in your timelines and budgets is really important uh, to the reviewers to take a decision. Timeline, uh, does it exceeding the one year or can be achieved within the year? Uh, budget is adequate and reasonable for project and the amount requested does not exceed uh, 10,000 euro for the outreach uh, engagement projects and 20,000 for the infrastructure projects. Uh, applicants uh, show careful and thorough understanding of the skills and resources needed for the project, demonstrate that the applicants have skill that aligned and are aware of potential challenges. Uh, last point in the, for the external reviews will be looking at an impact and scalabilities. Uh, does the proposal clearly articulate the benefits for the target communities in alignment with each one of the uh, focus areas? Uh, I think that's it for that. And then once the external review is complete again, that will be sent back to the GF committee. The GF committee will review the comments and feedback from the reviewers, and then again they will pass it to the uh, data site board member uh, with the recommendation, and that will be the decision uh, taken to a grant um, uh, the funding for the successful applicants. I believe that's uh, all you need to know about the criteria and the evaluation process. But if you have any questions, we'll be happy to um, answer those in the Q and A uh, session at the end. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Muhammad, for the presentation. Uh, yeah, this is a gentle reminder. If you have uh, any questions about the fund, please post them in the queue and the e box, and we are going to start responding to your questions right now. We have uh, a questions about associations. So, can associations apply uh, for this uh, fund? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's actually on our website. Uh, any organization, legal entity um, that works in the in the uh, research ecosystem, institutes, universities, libraries, associations, and rents, and more. Okay, thank you so much. And there is, was a question that was answered. Uh, we typed the answer, but I thought it would be important also to share it with everyone. So can an institution apply for both outreach and infrastructure uh, programs? So, yeah. Gabby, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, we will accept the maximum of two applications per organization. So one in each category, one in outreach and one in infrastructure development. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we have a question about the previous uh, project. If you uh, go to the chat box, you will see a, a link for the Global Access Fund. And within that link, you will be able to see the previous awarded uh, project. And if you click on the link for each organization or each institution, you will be redirected to uh, the landing page about the project itself, where you can see further information if you are interested. So there is a question about is this initiative sustainable or it is time bound and would it end soon? So it's again a question about the timeline. So this is the second year we are providing uh, this uh, global access fund. And uh, in parallel, we have a call for support. So we're collecting contributions to be able to uh, offer this fund also in the next years. Thank you. Uh, and then we have a question. Are applications open to all uh, African countries? So, yeah, Mohammed, do you want to pick this one? Yes, sure. Yes, it's open to all the countries in Africa, uh, Latin America and Asia. OK, thank you. I think we answered the question about the sustainability. 
what are the period for accepting and receiving the fund what are the required uh, financing system uh, issues i think period is we are talking about uh, accepting and receiving the fund so i'm not sure if your question is around the timeline we just answered the question about the timeline but gabby do you want to share more details about the finances yes so we are going to send notification or award decisions in the December this year. And then um, next year, the awarded projects um, will uh, receive the fundings. And if you have any other um, more detailed question, we invite you to, um, depending on your country, uh, contact um, uh, Bosun. Uh, for Africa or uh, Mohammed for uh, Middle East and Asia. Yeah, thanks, Gabby. Uh, Mohammed, we have a question about newly established universities and the research institutions. Can they apply also for this uh, fund if they want, for example, to build and establish their own repository? Yes, uh, sure. Um, as long as it's a nonprofit organization and within the research ecosystems, yeah, definitely you can apply. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Mohammed. So there is a question about template to guide for a successful uh, application. Like he's talking maybe about templates from the previous uh, awardees or something. I think the best case scenario, and we can discuss this, Gabby, if you want to share more details, they can reach out to us as a regional engagement specialist, and then we can have a conversation with them about their proposals. What do you think? Yes, and also if you are interested in successful applications, we strongly recommend you to join uh, the webinar session on September twenty fifth, where we will um, where directly three successful applicants will share uh, information about the, their project, and you can ask questions directly yeah. to them. Thanks, Gabby. I just posted also the link for this uh, session during our community meeting, so please. Go and register. You will hear stories from Tunisia, from uh, Nigeria. So it's really, really interesting. And Georgia as well. So it's really interesting session from the previous awardees. And we have a question. Is public health emergency management part of the ecosystem categorization? So, I, so yeah, yeah, Gabby, oh, go ahead. Sorry. The scope of this project uh, is to do um, outreach uh, or infrastructure development projects to uh, increase awareness and adoption of uh, persistent identifiers in the framework of open science. So it needs to be connected with uh, persistent identifiers, uh, data site infrastructure in the framework of open science. Okay, fantastic. And we have a question also about how is the fund de delivered to the applicant and if the applicant would like to use open collected, for example, would data site compensate for a percentage that open collective tasks from the fund or will it have to be paid by the applicant from the fund? I'm not sure I got that question in the right way, Lamis. So if you just want to elaborate more uh, on the questions or reshare it again, we still have uh, time. Yeah, please do. Submitted. So there's a question about, is the application submitted by one of the members of the educational institution? So maybe again, if you can share more details, Mohammed, about who is eligible to apply. I think the authorized person behind a specific institution, but if you can share more details. Yes, sure. I mean, especially for the infrastructure projects, we would expect the applicants to have a support from their institutions. So you should be representing your institutions. So if you are working in universities, then university should be endorsing and supporting your proposals for this fund. Um, I think uh, similarly, we uh, encourage you to do that for the outreach programs, but uh, definitely it's required in the infrastructure uh, funding categories. Fantastic. 
And then we have uh, uh, questions. We are running an e library from Tripfan University, I think Central Library, a university in Nepal. Can we organize awareness programs about e library from this uh, fund? Yes, sure. That is the fit within the outreach uh, category of the fund. Perfect. Yeah. So you are more than welcome to submit an application within the outreach activity. And Sagar, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to reach out to me. And then we have is the application submitted by one of the members of so uh, Dr. Abdullah, I'm not able to understand your question. If you want to elaborate more, is the application submitted by one of the members of the educational institution? I think we just talked about similar point. You should be the authorized person on behalf of your institution so you can submit the application uh, on behalf of your institution. Gabby? Um, yes, and just to mention that these year awarded projects received their payments through a bank transfer not through other platforms so just to remark that okay and yeah i think to both of you uh, are there are any specific activities that are not funded such as paying allowances for participations for outreach activities like you know they are organizing a workshop or something and they will just pay allowance for the participants um, yes, thank you for these very important questions. We actually have this uh, detailed in our frequently asked questions. Uh, so the funding cannot be used for uh, honoraria resources, services that are not related to the project, um, subawards, um, personal benefits, uh, cost uh, already incurred before the start of the project. You cannot use this funding to pay for data site membership um, or services. And um, you cannot use this funding for costs associated with conference or events uh, participation. So with this fund, if you, if you apply for the outreach category, you can host uh, your own event, but you cannot use this funding to attend a conference, for example. Yeah, thanks, Gabby. And as Gabby also mentioned in her presentation, you would need to adhere to data site ethics statement as well that highlights all of these uh, points. And we posted the link earlier in the chat. Uh, Muhammad, there is a question about can a library of a private university apply for the fund? So I'm not sure about the definition for a private university, if it's for profit or non-profit. Normally, private would mean... Mm -hmm. Profit. Yeah. So if it is a uh, private for profit, um, then I don't think it is fit within the category. If it is a private and still non-profit uh, institution, then it will be fit within the category and can apply. Thank you so much. Yeah, please, we still have some time. If you have any uh, questions about the fund, the criteria, the eligibility, this is a good opportunity for you to share your uh, inquiries. I don't see any uh, questions coming. Maybe you'll just wait for one minute. And yeah, please, if you have any questions, feel free to share them on the Q&A box and we are going to answer them. Yeah, I think this is the last uh, reminder. I think the, the, the session in 25 of September will be very helpful and very thoughtful for the applicants. So if you attend it, you would hear also from the previous year applicants about their experience. You might get some mm -hmm. clarity, yeah. things that you need to think about, consider before you apply. You will still have time, almost two weeks um, uh, before the deadline in October 11 to submit. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Muhammad. Yeah. Could you please share the link to the frequently asked uh, questions? Yeah, I think yeah, we can share that. Gabby, if you can share that. I have a question on 
Infrastructure, yeah, please share your question. This is the right time to ask. Uh, there is a question about, can you also support uh, bid to diamond, diamond open access uh, publisher? So I think the, the main point here, and I think you can elaborate more on this, Muhammad, if the institution who's applying is mainly non-profit organization. Am I right? Yes, you are right. Um, so if you are a non-profit organization uh, willing to develop surface infrastructure that's integrated with commercial uh, things, then you could state that in your uh, proposals and clarify that. However, you as an organization applying for this fund should be a non-profit organization. Okay. And Gabby, we have a question about, you know, uh... The hosting for the institutional repository on the cloud so can like part of the fund be used for that purpose yes um the funding can be used for infrastructure uh costs and also resources and any services needed uh for the project uh for example yeah printing materials uh venues catering for a workshop um uh, yeah, honoraria uh, or, or, or personal costs. And this is also um, in our frequent, frequently asked questions. Great. I don't see any uh, more questions. Let me just share my screen again for last uh, reminder about this session. Thank you so much for all of your interest. If you uh, really want to know more about successful project, join this session on 25th of September. You will hear and know stories about the previous year project. You will hear stories from uh, Infilipnet India. You will hear from EcoConnect Nigeria. And you will also learn about the CNU DST, the National Center uh, in Tunisia. So all of these uh, three projects, we awarded them last year. It would be good for you to hear uh, more perspective before you submit uh, your application. And I think uh, that's it because I don't have any, I don't see any questions uh, coming. There are some. Yeah. So you can see a last question. Can one reapply after a failed application so yeah uh, Muhammad do you want to take that yes sure I mean like if you have submitted last year an application and you receive the feedback from the committee and you address them and you would like to apply again so please do that yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah of course and I can see another oh, okay still like a thank you message okay uh, this message on the chat I can see that someone shared their email and they seem to be uh, with from the domain from Nigeria. As Gabby mentioned, my colleague uh, Busun, who's managing uh, Africa, please feel free to reach out uh, to them. And there is another question uh, for an infrastructure project. Can we hire uh, people, Gabby? Yes, um, you can, yeah, uh, use the funding to, yeah, for honoraria, uh, for software development, uh, yeah, video editing, for example, if you would do an outreach project, yes, any costs uh, to support uh, people conducting activities related to the project. Yes, definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think... Uh... That's it. I don't see uh, any. Oh, whenever I see that, I can see a new question coming. Uh, any examples of infrastructure uh, project, please? Uh, as we mentioned, if you go to uh, the data site global access uh, fund URL that we posted, you will see all the awarded uh, projects, the 12 organizations that we awarded them. Click on each organization, then you will be able to see the progress of each uh, awardee. Can uh, a religious organizations apply uh, for the fund? Uh, so, Hamad, do you want to answer this? Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, as long as you are a non-profit organization and your idea is to uh, mm -hmm. 
or the, your proposal is to uh, advance some research outputs and research ecosystems, so you can apply. Yeah, as long as within this uh, the scope of promoting open science, open research uh, practices as well. Okay, and there was a question about the application link, and I can see that Helena posted it on the chat. So I think, yeah, uh, some other questions. For open science awareness, can I expect a webinar for my connections to your site? So, Sushil, so uh, I think you mentioned that you are uh, based uh, in India, so I will reach out to you so we can have uh, a conversation uh, about that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and yeah, we're really happy to see all of this uh, interest in the Data Site Global Access Fund. So thank you everyone for joining the session today. Thank you for sharing uh, these questions. As we mentioned, feel free to reach out uh, to us if you have any questions, if you also want to, uh, you know, for us as a regional engagement specialist to walk you through or respond to any uh, questions. We are completely separated from the reviewing committee. So please feel free to reach out to us. And thanks again, uh, Mohammed and Thaisa for joining us today. And thank you so much, Gabby, for sharing uh, your thoughts. Thank you so much. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, earlier, sorry, the webinar slides and the recording also will be shared with you. So you will have access to all the links, all the URLs that you, uh, you saw on the slides. So no need to worry about that. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to receiving all your applications. Thank you.